Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them? Episode 43. I don't have a beer or wine today. I have a McDonald's Dr. Pepper. What Same. about you? Oh my God. Wait, why is your cup like that? Those are the OG cups. I miss those cups. Oh, we don't have clear ones. What? No, that's for coffee. Here in Georgia, this is all we have. I can't think of one time I've gotten a clear one in ever. I have to say it tastes like way worse than these cups. I don't know what it is, but like it doesn't taste right. It, like it's better out of these. Mm -hmm. Although if you leave those like in your room, it'll like leak and then just... It's a disaster. I've, I'm fully aware of that problem. <laughs> also, there is, I will say, if you, if I'm ever going home, I'll stop for Dr. Pepper like halfway and I'll be going through like Calabasas or Agora or like right outside of Malibu. They have the paper straws, Ew. which those I are understand criminal. save the environment, but like, no, just don't give me a straw. Like they're so bad. They just like disintegrate in your mouth. At that point, just be like Starbucks and give me the sippy cup lid because you know, I am left-leaning and all that stuff, but every time I see a paper straw, I'm like, those fucking liberals. Like, I just, like, Why it just brings out that? the rage in me. First of all, the straws aren't the problem. The corporations are the problem. Like, like, can we not punish the consumers with disintegrating straws? Like, not fun. But if you guys are wondering why we're drinking uh, Dr. Pe I love that it's, like, weird that we're not drinking alcohol. Like, it's because it's, like, 9 a.m. Well, actually, now it's almost 10. We're filming earlier. Uh, lots going on in my life. Uh, if you guys don't know, my poor little doggy, um, he has a cancerous tumor and I can't talk about it too much because I will literally lose my mind but he is getting amputated tomorrow so we are just banging in these episodes trying to make everything work life feels very hectic also I feel like I can say this because it's like the girlies you know what I mean like it's just it's the girlies here we're all friends here um I got my period for the first time in two years can I tell them that I didn't know what you were gonna share and I'm like oh no what, what is she gonna reveal right now um yeah no she just told me that before we were filming and I was like is that how that works yes bro I have been breastfeeding I've been pregnant and all this time I never had a period and of course today the day before Hershey surgery I'm like fuck whoever is uh, operating this fuck you. Well, you guys can be on the men together oh my god oh my god also guys if you didn't notice Happy Monday. Okay, yeah, I, I forgot. We maybe should have led with this. Yeah. Um, okay, so I think we even kind of mentioned it last week in passing, but now we fully decided and it's a confirmed decision. We're gonna be on Mondays now. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. And nobody cares. <laughs> Everyone watching is like, yeah, well, you have been the last like three weeks anyway. Yeah. So basically, honestly, we're not even giving ourselves the extra day. It's not like, so we won't be late anymore. Watch now. We start uploading on Tuesdays. It's more so, and this is not anything against our sponsors. We love them. Please don't take any offense and come back. We'll do two days late for you. <laughs> but um, the sponsors, uh, they have jobs that don't require them to be uh, working constantly on the weekends like we do. So when we don't finish an episode and they're out of office because then they're also in like Argentina. Yep. A lot okay. of them are in Argentina. So very different um, time zone. So yeah, between the weekend and the time zone, we don't get the approval in time and then we have to put off the episode. So we figured a um, Monday would be better because people work on Mondays. Yeah. And also we are exploring no promises. We're exploring the possibility of either doing two episodes a week or starting like a Patreon or something. We want to add something on. Uh, me personally, I like I've recently uh, opened up a lot with jobs. I used to have three jobs. Now, no, it's pretty much one job. I'm as excited as you are. I got the text this morning, <laughs> yesterday morning. What day is it? She texted me and I like she she goes, hey, can I call you to talk later? And I was like, you're so dramatic. You think like, <laughs> when have you ever texted me that in your life? No, I know, I know, no. I thought about that after I was like, yeah, that is kind of like an ominous text, but I didn't mean it to be that way. I just was like, what, what happened? What's going on? So um, I was very concerned. And then she was like, oh no, I just like wanted to, and then we couldn't talk. So she briefly explained. She goes, oh no, I was thinking um, my schedule's opening up. Why don't we do two episodes? And I was like, and a Patreon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I haven't had the time. Like it's been so intense the last couple months that I haven't had the time to do or even think about doing more than one episode a week. I'm leaning more towards the two episodes a week and I'll tell you why. Like I feel like that will keep us more topical like in the moment of things happening. I feel like when updates happen we'll already have another episode to film and it'll just be a, a better flowing more uh, current event podcast versus like we're a week late like today's episode. <laughs> or I think it will also give us the opportunity maybe like I think a lot of the time we will have plenty to talk about and have it be topical if we do two episodes. But sometimes maybe if there's not a lot going on, I 
feel like it gives us more of an opportunity to do the like retrospective on old dramas because then we don't have to skip a week of the actual drama and we can do both. Oh, 100%. And also maybe give us more options to do like fun stuff where we're, you know, just having a good old time. Just try stuff and it's not like replacing an actual episode. Basically more videos. Yeah, exactly. And just, you know, let us know what you guys think about that. And also if you are open to two episodes a week, which I feel like a lot of people have said in the past that they would love. What do you think the comments are going to be like? No, sorry, pass. We don't Once a week is my cap. (laughs) Just can't watch more. But if you do want it, what day of the week? So we have this Monday episode, which works for us. What day of the week other than Monday, obviously? I'm thinking like a Monday, Thursday or Monday, Friday situation. I was thinking Friday. Yeah, I was thinking Friday. That could be good. Let us know what you think. I feel like I was talking to my husband about this. Like I felt like the podcast was going to have a shift. I just wasn't sure what that shift was going to look like. And I feel like moving forward with two episodes, like that's kind of the the change I was feeling in my witch soul. I w- I've been ready. Yeah, I know. She has been ready. It's just I, I literally have not had the time. But anyway, all that rambling aside, we are finally ready to get started. Thank God for chapters, man. We do be rambling. People commented on the last one because we always apologize for the rambling and they like the rambling. Listen, I sit here and watch Ethan Klein literally silently eating McDonald's for, I think he did 20 minutes. Like, Lily, no words. Just ambiance with a green screen. Last week, we're trying to get his info on BBTV and it's like, okay, keep talking. Come on, next sentence, let's go. That actually, when we were watching that kind of made me realize why I'm not a regular viewer because I don't not enjoy it. Like I do find like, especially if I see the clips, I think a lot of the time it's funny. And I definitely enjoyed Frenemies like everyone else. But that was like so fast paced because Trisha literally is the fastest talker in the entire world. (laughs) Oh my God. Have you ever seen the clips of her fast talking slowed down? It's just gibberish. Like she's not saying anything. Oh, slowed down. Absolutely not. But that sounds like gold. Literally, it's just her going. (laughs) Yeah, Anyway, I that was so fast paced. My ADHD is so bad at my attention span. I can't like when I'm watching something, if it's going too slow, I like have something else that I'm watching at the same time. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of like that too. I watch Ethan's this is kind of psycho, but I watch Ethan's podcast while I'm editing our videos. No, that's very much going to come into play when we get to my topic in a little bit because um, I'll explain later. Remind me that I said that. Since you want to be all mysterious, I will also be mysterious and introduce our first topic, which is a good old- It's not mysterious because the people watching, like it was in the title. (laughs) Yeah, well, yeah. It's mysterious to Lily. I love when, well, the first topic is going to be me introducing this to Lily. And then the second topic is essentially her introducing something that I'm not very familiar with. So we got a good balance in this episode. But the first topic is a good old TikTok obscure drama and it involves uh, cake decorating. So let's just dig into it, shall we? I know that some of our um, viewers did suggest that we, I don't know if I got introduced to it actually because one of you guys tagged me on TikTok, but it definitely like started coming up on my For You page at some point. And all I knew before I actually looked into it was that there was this cake decorator and you see this a lot on TikTok where small businesses will kind of not complain about their customers, but talk about like customer horror story type of thing. And people are almost always like, hell yeah, like fuck the customer, right? Like the customer is not always right, which like period, I agree. It's kind of like, like an am I the asshole, but like they aren't Exactly. Exactly. So this is Kylie. Kylie was a like home baker that turned into a bakery. I think I mentioned that my daughter's smash cake and first year birthday cake was made by someone in a home bakery here in Georgia. Yes. And that's a thing, right? Like the cottage bakery, I don't know what the fuck it's called, but something like that. They have like a license where technically, I guess if they give you explosive diarrhea, they're not responsible. Something yeah, along Is this going to be another fucking pink sauce or like botulism situation? No, fun, but no, no, that's not what it is. This is, um, let me just, I'll, we'll just dig into it. So this is a TikTok that she posted and I will talk about the response to it after we watch it. Jesus Christ. Today I had one of the worst client experiences I've ever had since opening the storefront. This customer reached out to us via our Facebook page and wanted to order one of our six layer signature rainbow cakes. I started doing these even as a home baker, so I've been making them for a really long time. And we have a signature style to them. They always come with the six rainbow layers and then the vanilla buttercream and then covered with rainbow sprinkles. She went with the eight inch cake that serves 18 guests and that is $75.99. The 
shown in the video is actually a six inch and they are $65.99. Upon arrival, she seemed to be really surprised that the cake was covered in sprinkles. We explained to her that all of our signature rainbow cakes are decorated this way and covered in sprinkles. And if you want a saying, we just add it to the top of the cake with a layer of vanilla buttercream and black buttercream for writing. She then got super defensive and very rude about the price of the cake. Although this is exactly how we decorate all of our rainbow cakes. She even bashed us and put us on her Facebook page. Also a reminder that we don't individually place each sprinkle onto the cake, so they may look slightly different in pictures. Any initial thoughts? I'm confused. <laughs> That's a good initial thought. So basically she posted that everybody was on her side. It's like, well, I mean, the cake looks fine. I mean, it's not even. I was gonna say, I mean, I will say it wasn't the most gorgeous cake I've ever seen. Oh, okay. Um, Interesting thought. Oh, uh, should I take that back? No, <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Also, I assume you don't buy a cake from someone that hasn't advertised them with pictures. That's not really something you buy like on a whim by a text description. So does she have a website? Did the cake, like, I assume the lady knew what she was buying. Why would she be surprised? Especially that there's sprinkles. That feels like it was obvious. That's an interesting thought because the customer ended up kind of answering that question. So she was like, all right, bitch, you post a TikTok, I'll post a TikTok too. And she dropped some receipts. I love that this is what we're talking about. Wait, wait, wait. You asked for my first reaction. It was, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> but I'm here for it. Continue. Bro, every, I mean, this has uh, exploded the baking world. All right? Yeah, no, Have some I, respect. I, I'm buying in. <laughs> so the customer posted a TikTok and this was the cake that she got. I want to get, what do you think about this cake right here? Does, happy birth, what's the name? Trilby. <laughs> that, that's, should that not be what I'm focusing on? Well, you could focus on the fact that the writing looks like I did it. That that could be one I was going to say, I mean, I think one of the problems that I couldn't read it is that it's borderline illegible, but also what was that name? <laughs> yeah, there's two elements to it for sure. But it literally looks like someone just smeared frosting, half-assed wrote Happy Birthday Trilby, and then even the piping on the bottom is super sloppy. The sprinkles do look really uneven, like you see the cake through it. And TBH, the only reason I really knew it said Happy Birthday was because I just assumed it said Happy Birthday because that's what this cake was for. It, yeah, it looks like it says like... It kind of looks like it says Henry. <laughs> It actually looks like it says Henry Hershey. But anyway, it's horrible handwriting. The cake is really ugly. And honestly, it looks like I made it. Like you would assume a cake that's just a bunch of sprinkles like on it would look pretty good. And this is someone who has a bakery, right? So it's like- Well, so here's the thing. In my head, I'm comparing these to like, obviously I'm not comparing it to what I would make because like mine, uh, to be honest, I think I could probably- No, no, you could totally do this. <laughs> but I think um, Megan Rinks, our friend, good friend of the show, is an excellent baker. Yep. And she has made these cakes that I'm like, bitch, are you kidding? Where did, like, and she can't even eat most of them because she's allergic to all the stuff that's in it. So she just makes them for other people, but she does these, like, fancy drip You just drip inspired me to text Megan a picture of this cake and be like, what do you think? <laughs> I'd love to hear her thoughts. She yeah. would rip it apart. <laughs> so I'm thinking of what she makes in her kitchen for her Instagram. Like her business is making content. It's not actually even selling the cakes, which I mean, I guess you would need them to look good for that too. But Megan's not a professional cake maker is what I'm saying. I don't know what really qualifies you to be. I, she could be probably. I think that Megan could outbake this person um, blindfolded. Actually, and not outbake, out decorate because out -decorate. we don't know how it tastes. I honestly <laughs> could do this easily. Like this looks like a homemade cake. So you're paying almost $70 for a six inch cake, which is really small. Wait, how much was it? This one was 68, I think. Oh, she texted back. Wow, Megan, quick text her. I was gonna say, I'm blowing up. What's going on? She says, ah, oh my God, hi. <laughs> she says, I don't know why it said hi. Oh, <laughs> what? who is this? What? She's not referring to us. She means the professional baker. Oh, I don't know. Kylie, what's her name? Not important. Yeah, not important, Megan. Tell us what you think about the cake. Is it irrelevant? You spelled irrelevant wrong. Oh my God. Anyway, so we'll we'll hold our breath for Megan's official professional, well, not professional, but baker enthusiast opinion on this. But it looks like dog shit, right? Can we all agree? It looks like dog shit. It looks horrible. If I paid $65 for that, I'd be pissed. Honestly, going back to even the first video, before I even saw the cake, one of the things that instantly came to mind was like her showing the prep to make the cake with all the like cakes in their respective tins, all the colors. That looked 
kind of messy, which like one of the biggest things I'm always impressed with by people that bake and cook on Instagram, on like social media is how clean everything looks all the time. And I feel like if you're a professional baker, that should really be the case. And it just seemed kind of like uh, I did that. Yeah, a hundred percent. And also one thing I couldn't help but notice, I know that typically you don't need to have gloves on to bake, but when you're talking about like smashing sprinkles on with your hand, you almost always see them with a glove doing that. Like if they're gonna not touch a on? cake, like no, bro, Look at this girl just smashing this shit. I wasn't paying attention. Megan said, are they a professional? Like, this is their business? And then in all caps, this is insanity. I'm more surprised that Megan doesn't know about this. Okay, yeah, she said, because even if it's not, and they just bought all the ingredients for just this cake, that's not $80. <laughs> she said, that cake is a mistake. Bro, just look at this. Look even at the apple. I don't feel like that's how you do it. No, you don't. You've seen, I've seen them do it. Like they'll have almost like a handful of sprinkles and they'll like press it into the cake with gloves. Look at this shit. Oh. <laughs> Like, bitch. Honestly, even when she was doing it, I was like, that felt a little aggressive, but then it came out like, that looks okay. Oh, Megan says that she deserves jail time. So that's oh! Megan's official <laughs> Straight response. to jail. Just straight to jail. I mean, it really is super bad, but that you would wish, you would wish it ended there, bitch. It don't. So the customers started posting their DMs together. Some of it's like being covered by the text, but essentially um, Kylie, who is- <laughs> I read ahead, I'm dying. She said, this is what all of our standard rainbow cakes look like. I'm not sure where the confusion was. And also decorated the same as the slices that your mom purchased. Our standard three layer, nine inches are $55.99. So yes, adding six layers of rainbow cake is $75.99. She paid, oh, I thought she paid six, she paid almost $80 for this. If you wanted to decorate it a specific way, then how we do them here, that's something that would have to be discussed. The customer just says, Look at it. That's the problem. <laughs> That's why I'd run ahead too. Just like, bitch, open your eyes. I mean, shit. First of all, as if the baker's gonna look at that and be like, like as if she sees the problem. She made it, so she doesn't see the problem. I know, but I feel like the, the lady's basically like, this you? Yeah, no, literally, it's like, can you see? And I hadn't read all of these, but holy shit, this is so unhinged. So Kylie says, the price and time that I do the work for doesn't change just because it's not what you thought it should be. This is the standard price I charge for this style of signature rainbow cake. I have never decorated the rainbow cakes or advertised them to look any other way than what you received. The white buttercream was purposefully placed on top to add the happy birthday trilby that you requested to be on it. Thanks and have a fantastic day. <laughs> First of all, we know you put it there on purpose. It looks like shite. That's what we're talking about here. And then the customer says, yeah, because I had to have a cake today for our celebration. I'm not even gonna read the rest, but you lost a very good customer, but I will leave this here for you if you think I'm just being difficult. And I believe- Oh my God, is it people, like her, her saying it to her friends and them responding? It's viewers from her TikTok that she had posted, like responding and being basically like, yo, that cake is ugly as fuck. Kylie says, a disrespectful person is no good customer of mine. Have a great day, ma'am. And then the customer said, it's not disrespectful to expect quality. It's disrespectful to serve your reliable customers something like this good luck you're gonna need it and i could barely see uh the end but basically the the baker was just like super 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 heavily defending herself like this is what we advertise and this is what you can expect which interestingly enough people found on tiktok that on multiple occasions so because her business is out there and it's on social media on multiple occasions on her facebook page she will post advertisements for her bakery with stock photos from Google that you can reverse image search of cakes of literal like design. There was one that was a unicorn cake. There was one that was this chocolate cake that looked beautiful. Stock photo from Google. That is illegal. Straight to jail. No, I mean, you don't jail. go to jail for that. But you would, you should, I think, I mean, that's false advertising. I don't know like who's gonna bring that to like uh, the Better Business Bureau. Like, I don't know who's gonna get, like make a big deal about it, but like, you can't do that. Something that's really funny is that uh, the person ended up making their own cake for Trilby. And um, take a look at it. It's a million times better. <laughs> the writing is literally, if you compared like a four-year-old to a calligraphy artist. <laughs> like, no, it's not the most beautiful cake I've ever seen, but it looks a fuck ton better than the other one. Not even that one. The example she makes for like, that one, at least the sprinkles are like even and stuff on the one that the baker originally posts. The follow-up when we see the receipts, they're not evenly placed. I mean, the buttercream was purposely, that's such a weird way to put it. 
purposefully placed on top. No shit. Even just something as simple as the piping on top that she did herself versus this professional baker, quote unquote, look at the bottom piping. It's super fucking uneven. Everything looks like shit. And people started finding a lot of her cakes and they all look pretty bad. I have a question. Oh, please. You know, we've talked in the past um, and I've posed the question, why do so many people that aren't good singers want to become singers? Like, do they really think they're good or do they think, like, I just don't really understand the psychology behind yes, it. Yes, they do. This is another situation where it's like, why would you become a baker if you weren't good at making cakes? That feels like you're just setting yourself up for failure. <laughs> you're assuming that everybody has a level of self-awareness. And something that I've realized from watching people serenade each other on Love is Blind is that people do not have self-awareness, nor do they have that thing inside of them that says, Maybe not. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people are just like full steam ahead doing things that they're not good at. And you know what? It's okay to do things you're not good at. It's not okay to charge people for things you're not good at though. It's fine if it's a hobby and you made this for like your cousin or something and they <laughs> didn't really care about their cake. A hundred percent, I'm being honest. If I made the cake on the right for say my husband for his birthday, I would literally be like, okay, at least I made a stack cake that's not falling apart. But you know what? I would have to apologize to my husband and be like, yo, your cake looks like shit, my bad. But I tried. Like it would be that kind of cake. Oh my God, Megan. I love Megan because she just goes in instantly into research mode. And she says, oh my God, she has a storefront. That's mortifying. That's not an $80 cake. She says, but for it looking like crap, that's insanity. And then she started linking to multiple other cakes, including Milk Bar, who have cheaper cakes than this, which Milk Bar is like a super famous place that makes cake for like yeah. celebrities and shit. Oh my God, here, wait, She's she sent Susie Cakes. I'm picking that because I, I know Susie Cakes is super expensive, but that used to be when I like would actually do birthday things. That would always be my go-to because they're so, oh my God, six inch cake, $49, nine inch cake, $66. Do you see the That's diarrhea both cake, of Lily? Those what? Do you see the diarrhea wedding cake? Oh, did she send something? <gasps> Bitch. Oh. Like, what is that? Is that rustic or rusted? You know what I'm saying? Like, that shit looks fucked up. I don't know. I But the fact that the Susie cakes are like, and I've, de like, they are delicious. And again, we haven't tasted these. Maybe they're weirdly phenomenally good. But something tells me they're not. I'm dying. The TikTok that Megan linked us to is her responding to the haters. And it says, y'all can catch what actually went down on Tuesday after my interview with Insider. Cat 10 Barge has entered the chat. <laughs> and it's the picture of the diarrhea cake. It's like, girl, this is not what you, what are you doing? <laughs> See, this is, it brings me back to the singing comparison. Like, why are you going out of your way to put yourself out? out there, not only as a professional baker where you're going to sell thing, sell, I mean, this can't be the first customer complaint she's got. Dude. And then you have the balls and all that. Like, I, she has the confidence of a straight white man. Look at this one that I'm about to send the group chat. Like, are you joking? It looks like I made it. Like, it was my first time really venturing out with fondant. And I was like, let's let's party. Like, let's see what happens. I'm losing it. Because, and now that even skull. makes me think, because I, I forget. My college roommate, her sister-in-law is, a, and I'm pretty sure she's like a professional baker. People definitely hire her, but she does it out of her house. I remember she made her husband, my friend's brother, like an in and out cake one time. And it was full on, like, legit, like, cut, looks like a burger. And it was so cool. She does the most awesome stuff. Is this a joke? Look at the skull. <laughs> That's not even what skulls look like. What do you? Oh my God, this, this sweet 16 one. She needs to actually be incarcerated for that. Oh my God. Like, what the fuck the is that? The thing is, it's like, it's fine if that's like- No, rough. look at the burger on the bottom. That's not fine. Bro, what the fuck is that? Oh my God, it gets worse. The more, and this is her response to the haters. How do you lack that much self-awareness that people, okay, I also really hate this when everyone's like, haters, haters, haters. If 99.9% .9 of people agree on something, it's probably not because they're haters. Now, there's always gonna be hating ass bitches on the internet. Of course, that's what the internet's for. But when everyone's telling you, hi, this cake looks like dog shit, then it looks like dog shit. I feel like the only people that have like, haters when they really shouldn't are people like the D'Amelios where it's like they don't have haters because they're like doing a bunch of problematic stuff just like people are assholes and they're like jealous and there's just so many people that follow them that they get shit for stuff they're not actually doing anything bad people that do things and then get hate for it and then are like fuck the haters you know no they're there for a reason you would buy do you them. think it's like a coping mechanism like i don't understand how people lack that kind of it's like honestly a new psychological condition that has come with the internet i feel like 
where people just automatically lump things together. So it's like the fact that innately the internet does have a lot of haters and trolls and that people are assholes. It's their coping mechanism to be like, people are just wanting to hate on something. It has nothing to do with me. I think that it's given people an out to not have to self-reflect on things that are kind of painful too. Like you don't want to accept the fact that you've been baking for what, probably like five years and you're not good at it. That's not a fun thing to admit. Like I get why someone would want to be like, no, it's just the haters, it's just the haters. Brings me back to my question of why would you become a professional baker if you're not good at making cakes? Like I'm like still would feel uncomfortable being like, I'm a professional editor. When like the amount of videos and hours I've spent editing, you couldn't even deny it. But then, oh my God, that's such a good point to bring up because I also feel, I mean, I've been editing for a while too. And it's a humbling but awesome thing to get notes from people you're editing from because it's like, I can always change things. Like it doesn't, I'm not perfect. Everything I do is not perfect. Like there's always gonna be an availability to for my content that I make to be interpreted in a certain way and that's fine it doesn't mean I'm good or bad or whatever this it's like too many people told her she was fire you know what I mean like too many people supported her dream and nobody told her like yo like you could totally be a good baker let's just take some classes first or something you know what I mean like nobody like humbled her everyone just like lifted her up on a pedestal and she did not take any criticism and Question. now we're here does she have a, like a big following? Or is this like so obscure? Let me see. <sighs> Cause I, again, I'm like, I can't imagine if if this was not like, she was having a real bad day and no, this is what she came has, out of it and that. No, she has 6,221 followers. Which I mean, for a cake maker, I feel like that's a lot. Yeah, baker, cake maker. Oh shit, she responded. I'm gonna, hold on, let me send myself this TikTok. <laughs> well. I guess my main takeaway is because now I feel like we're just kind of being assholes and saying that our cakes are ugly, which I mean is more- See, um, are we being assholes or do we have eyes? Oh, I was gonna say, which honestly is more of an objective observation <laughs> than anything else in my opinion, as I'm more of an asshole. But um, no, my biggest takeaway here is though, like the fact that she's doing interviews and stuff, I have to imagine is also like a coping mechanism of some kind to kind of make herself feel uh, more important than she, like I always think my old boss used to say, you're no one until you have haters. Like if we ever complained about a mean comment or something, maybe she thinks that like, if she can frame it that way, it'll make her seem, I don't know. The whole thing is very confusing and I would love to know the psychology behind everything from singers to bakers to everything, but like self-awareness This is her response. General. So maybe it'll give us a, a glimpse into that mindset. Since you guys just love to talk about me and um, make viral videos about me honestly it's it's very funny to me I'm not is it I'm not offended by your guys's comments because honestly um I mean look at some of you it's it's pointless your time and effort anyway there's a now a viral video a now a viral that's video going around about um how I use other people's work mm -hmm. and that's not true I host cake decorating classes in my hometown and I've done this for years and I use inspiration photos as to what we will be creating uh, during this class. Uh, my customers are well aware of this. And it's honestly just so funny. Y'all try to reach so hard. Um, I have worked <laughs> extremely hard to get where I am. And just the fact that you guys that have nothing going on with your life and yourself have so much to say about a situation that you don't know the full backstory on. I would, you know just keep my mouth shut because it's not doing anything. <laughs> That's the fucking meme where the, the mask is on the front and it's like happy, but he's like really like fucking losing well, it behind it. Like girl, off because you have a lot of things to say. I just think it's really funny. And it's like, you're, uh, bitch, I know you're crying. <laughs> That's always the thing we like, I don't even care, but like, well, I mean, I, this kind of shows that you do, but continue. And I cannot believe she hosts cake decorating class. Wait, also back up. What's like the full backstory? Like what what more? Uh, there's all you know they always have to say that. Like you don't know everything. What else don't we know? What I even started to bring up earlier is like, unless she was just having a, cause again, this had to have happened before. This couldn't be the first person to complain if the cake quality 100%. is always like that. Unless this was a one-off kind of situation where she had a really shitty day and had to throw something together really fast and it was pretty mediocre. And she was like, I don't have time for this shit, whatever. And maybe that's why she didn't really fight to keep the I customer. would believe that possibility if I hadn't seen the rest of her cakes. But then we saw the rest of her cakes and then I, was like, ah, no, now I'm confused. Megan's comment on the burgers of that one cake, she just said, so fleshy. <laughs> like, dude, that it's objectively a really bad cake and that's okay, but you need to either get better or accept the fact 
that you're not that good at making cakes because this attitude of like y'all just are hilarious and also I just hate the fucking rhetoric of like because you have an opinion you must have no life do you know how quick it is to leave a comment to give an opinion even what we're doing right now one two hours of a day out of an entire week we have no life no i do I have a, quite a life very very deaf noodles of her oh my god it's so deaf noodles it's just annoying to be like oh you're wasting all your time on me girl i am not gonna think about you another second of my life other than when i'm editing this and that's it honestly it was kind of breaking up a little bit so i'm not sure i caught this bit did i hear her um say that she didn't even watch all the videos did she say that i don't, I don't know i could have been but something about like the hater she's like not even paying attention to them or something don't you love how everyone's I was like, I mean, I didn't even watch it. Like, I didn't even pay attention to it, but it's like, well, but you're responding to it right now, so clearly you're pretty aware. No, literally. They, <laughs> I didn't watch it, but that one that has this in it, it's like, you watched it, and it's okay. Honestly, at the end of the day, is this thousands of dollars? No. But you have to realize as a business owner, a small business owner who is now tainted on the internet, she's done. Like, this is never gonna be, this is like the pickle lady, pink sauce, it's just never gonna go well, away for you. That's why I thought it was so odd that she would be like seeking out interviews and stuff. Like, bitch, stay quiet. Well, <laughs> it's already, the damage is done. But like, as a business owner, I've said this time and time again, like with the pink sauce thing and everything we talk about, it's like, you have one shot as a small business owner to do things the right way. And it doesn't mean give the customers whatever they want if it's unfair or you genuinely feel like, hey, this is not right. You're taking advantage of me or whatever. But when you get this kind of overwhelming feedback about a small business, you need to listen because if not, you're done. Like this is not gonna work out for you on social media. When also, I think that there's also become kind of, and I, I think it does work for some brands and some products slash companies. Like for example, when I'm seeking out a cake to buy, I don't really give a fuck who's making it. I don't need to know what their personality's like. I don't need to want to hang out with them. I don't need to know what they look like. I just yeah. want to know what the cakes look like. If it happens to be someone that's really entertaining that also makes cakes and they can make that brand work for them. But like the fact that this girl, I don't know what the rest of her TikTok looks like, but the fact that she's jumping on and getting so aggressively defensive about the cake stuff, I'm like, how about you just focus on the cakes? Why are you making this about you? Like, cause now you are ruining your career. This would have all easily been done had she just not had Shut such up. a stank attitude about it. No, and even directly to her customer, like you have such a stank attitude. There is a way to deal with it. Even if you didn't want to rectify, you didn't want to refund or whatever the fuck, you could have been like, I'm really sorry that you weren't happy with my work. Then here's like maybe 10% off your next cake or some bullshit I was like just that. Gonna say, like, Anything. offer some kind of a discount, some kind of make yeah. good for it. Any acknowledgement of it. Cause like I used to work in customer service. There's a way to not give them what they want, but in a way that's not like, super horrible like you just don't give them what they want but in a nice way and you try to rectify it a little bit as much as you can you don't have to refund her when you do work in a customer service field of any kind you have to be nicer than you would be if it was just like a personal exchange you were having yeah a hundred percent but uh fun right fun topic I'm like, I, I don't really know what the takeaway here is. I, I think- Oh no, there's she, no takeaway. <laughs> yeah, she just needs to, I think she needs to reevaluate her business practices and um, maybe career in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's no takeaway. It's just for funsies. This was just a fun little, a little tidbit. You know, I had to share it with my girlies. All right, so it's time to move on to our next topic. Yes, yes it is. But first, we do have another word from another sponsor. Thank you so much to ZocDoc once again for sponsoring this podcast. Another repeat sponsor. Honestly, we have some really, we're just so thankful. Yeah, ZocDoc is just awesome. If you guys don't know, they are the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them and treat almost every condition under the sun. And one of the keys here is that it's an app on your phone or the website. So you can literally just go on and make your appointment there. You don't have to call, which I know I always mention this, but like, I really, really don't like talking on the phone. No, a hundred percent. And especially not to a doctor's office. I was going to say, especially to make an appointment. Oh, it's so triggering. Also, they help you find quality doctors. So you know that the person that you are going to see is not going to treat you like a number. They're they're not gonna be rushed. I hate when doctors are rushed, they come in and out and you feel like, what just happened? Did they even see me? Surprise twists, like the one we just spoke about with cake, uh, might work for podcasts, but definitely not for medical care. You don't want surprises. You don't want any sort of uh, switcheroos. No, no. You know, you want reliability. It's nice to know what you're getting into. And if you guys wanna try ZocDoc for yourself, you can go to ZocDoc.com slash DWKT and download the app for free. Then you could find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are even available within 20 24 hours. Again, that's zocdoc.com slash dwkt. zocdoc.com slash dwkt. 
WKT. And thank you again to ZocDoc for sponsoring this episode. Okay, so our next topic, I feel like it's going to be a little dated by the time this goes up, but I, and I wanted to actually talk about it. What's new? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I actually wanted to talk about it last week. And Jesse, if you remember that when we were talking like right before we started filming, I'd watched the mm -hmm. video we're about to discuss right before. And I, was I not acting like super like weird about it? Like it was just like a very yeah. off-putting situation. I'm referring to, if you guys don't know, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Uh, you said when you're watching Ethan, sometimes you like have it on when you're editing. So you're like half paying attention. I watch mm -hmm. a lot of videos, especially like in between while I'm editing or like if something's like rendering or loading or something you have like, yeah. or like I want to give myself a like 20 minute break. YouTube videos are perfect. Cause I'm like, okay. I can watch like one or two videos and then I have to go back to work. And you know I love a good deep dive. So a lot of the videos that get recommended to me are the like kind of uh, internet drama, internet mystery, a lot of like darker stuff, but then a lot of like more influencer facing content. One of the people that comes up in my suggested is a YouTuber named Sunny V2. And he has, I wanna say like 3 million subscribers, something crazy, he has a lot of subscribers. I guess, had you asked me before, like if I like his videos, I wouldn't, I felt kind of indifferent. I felt like they were well produced, but I never really was like super paying attention because I always kind of put it on in the background and they're kind of just like factual. He's recounting kind of like history as it happened. I never really felt like he was weaving in too much of his own opinion. Oh my God, I was watching this video kind of passively. And then I would literally get like shocked into paying attention fully because some of the things he was saying, I was like, is this, are you? Are you kidding? Trigger warning, this is gonna include some, uh, quite a bit of transphobia and amongst other things. This video that Sunny V2 made is about the recent uh, scenario that's been developing with Mr. Beast and his employee slash longtime friend since like before he even started his YouTube channel named Chris Tyson. Because Chris Tyson has recently announced that he has been on hormone replacement therapy for about two months and he is transitioning and he does go by all pronouns still. So I'll probably be referring to him as him in this video. Naturally, you can assume because Mr. Beast has one of the biggest channels on the internet that that has received quite a bit of mixed reactions because of the current political climate where people act like being trans is suddenly going to like make their kids all strippers or something. Like I don't even, <laughs> under it just evolves into the craziest arguments. And I know that a there's transphobic people out there, obviously I'm, I'm not stupid. And I know that there's a lot of hate going around in general. But when I watched the Sunny V2 video, I think the reason it was so off-putting to me is because it's not even that he's, I mean, yes, he's being outwardly transphobic in the entire video, but it's not even just that, it's the way he does it is so like, he's doing it very like analytically as if he's really dissecting things, but it's all based on hate comments and like the worst stereotypes and just his own really gross assumptions about everyone involved. I'll read the description first and then we'll play a few clips because Jesse, you haven't seen it yet. Nope, I have not seen it. Okay, so <laughs> the video description alone is, well, first of all, the title is, why Chris will soon be a nightmare for Mr. Beast. Are you fucking kidding me? So I even saw that title and was like, what the fuck is this? So I, I knew going into it, it wasn't gonna be great, but it's not even like as blatant as you would expect most transphobia to be. It's like the weirdest, I don't even know how to describe it, but. The description is, Chris Tyson has been in a bit of hot water recently, and there have been plenty of videos on that. But how will this drama affect Mr. Beast? First of all, you spelled effect wrong. It's with an A. <laughs> I always fuck that up too, so I can't even, I can't even go in on him for that. Is this going to be Mr. Beast's biggest controversy to date? Or will Jimmy be able to steer the ship to clear waters as he usually does? Does his friend Carl Jacobs and the Carl effect have anything to do with how Chris became the most hated Mr. Beast member? What impact will this have on the Mr. Beast channel. This is why Chris will soon be a nightmare for Mr. Beast. I'm sorry, I know they're friends and he's part of the channel and stuff, but have we completely lost humanity that it's like, okay, sure, you're doing what you feel like you need to do for your own mental and physical and all the, all sort you of health. I have no idea. But what about Mr. Beast though? I think you'll be fine. Honestly though, the way not just Sunny V2, but uh, it seems like a decent amount of people are reacting to this whole thing is as though Chris is like, I've even been trying to think of some kind of comparison because I can't. It literally is like as if he was like, by the way, guys, I'm going to be um, an adult entertainer on the weekends or so. Like, I'm going to be a stripper on the weekends. But even if... Uh 
I wouldn't even care. I mean, I guess because they have potentially a younger aunt. I don't know. But like literally as if they're, he's doing something that's just this selfish, horrible decision that he's doing to them, not for himself. I just don't understand how people could care that much. The cake decorator wants to say, you have no life, whatever. But this is really like no life shit. Like, it's just like, why do you care so much? About That's the thing. It's like, doing? all I could do was think afterwards. I'm like, he sat down. Like, this is a script he wrote. It is unreal. Not even that someone could just have these points of views, but feel so confident about brazenly spread it. Like this guy has millions of subscribers and gets millions of views. And he had no problem putting up a video where he truly just treats Chris as being Mr. Beast's property, essentially. Honestly, we could probably watch the whole video, but it might take too long. So here's uh, some of the, I would say highlights, but lowlights <laughs> of Sonny's video. In mid 2022, fans began to notice that Chris Tyson was changing. In the early days, he represented the quintessential Southern gun and truck loving dude. Yet beginning in March, 2022, Chris began to display increasingly feminine traits. Fans also noticed that he'd removed his wedding ring with the ring's absence correlating perfectly with the very first post in which he'd painted his nails. This was put forward in many comments supportive of Chris, who implied that there'll be millions of queer kids who look up to him, although this doesn't necessarily mean that it'll add any value to the videos. The only clean solution, should things go south, might be for Chris to resign himself, and even then rumors and bad press will be unavoidable. Whether it be arrogance or ignorance, Chris seems oblivious to how this whole thing might impact Jimmy, forgetting that he achieved his current level of success by avoiding this exact type of drama. At the end, he quite literally, well, he brings up the fact that um, Mr. Beast already has an LGBTQ audience. Mr. Beast has likely cultivated a massive LGBT audience, all of whom are already watching anyway. It's like eight, two plus two equals eight. And then at the end he goes, as we've learned in the past, most of the time, when you add over the top LGBTQ characters for relatability, it rarely goes as planned. If we've learned anything from Hollywood in recent years, it's that adding over the top LGBT characters for the sake of relatability rarely works as intended and is often nothing more than a distraction from the premise of the movie or video. He's not a character. Yeah. He is his friend that helped him build this business. Are you kidding? I mean, you know what? It, it takes me back to the Vine days of <laughs> people just giving up, like all they could think of is in content. Like that's how their brains work. Like everything is about numbers and content. And I think this is a person whose brain only works that way. So he's like, well, what's the benefit of this? It's like, well, he's probably gonna stay alive now. The entire thing is like a deep dive into the business aspects of how this is going to affect Mr. Beast, which honestly, I hope it doesn't. And that will be really shitty if it did. But also he's overlooking the fact that it is a human involved. They didn't add an over the top LGBT. They ha they kept their friend. I think too, like Mr. Beast is a person that tries really to be neutral politically. Like he's not very outspoken, not very opinionated on difficult topics or anything like that. So you already know. Which is why this has gotten so big. If this was a character, let's just say that. I mean, it's absolutely not. It's a human being who's just living their truth, God forbid. If that was a character, they would never choose this because he doesn't really make statements or anything like this. Like he doesn't do anything controversial on the internet. I'm just wondering how it's not apparent to him that this is what you just said. It's a friend being who he is and another person just accepting their friend. That's all this is. Literally all of these people are framing it as like it is a selfish and he even says at one point, I think in the video, everything he says it's he, he's doing this to Mr. Beast. None of this seems like he understands that this is a personal choice that Chris is making for his own personal benefit, which by the way, I'll read a tweet that Chris has put out that I think Sonny even included in the video. So it's not like he doesn't know. And I think this was when he like announced that he was doing it. He said, informed consent HRT saved my and many others lives. The hurdles GNC people have to jump through to get life-saving gender affirming healthcare in a first world country is wild to me. Just let people make informed decisions about their own bodies. And 
Mr. Beast responded to that and said, got you with a bunch of hearts. So there's one Mr. Beast supporting him because that's another thing is a lot of people are like, Mr. Beast is being forced to support him and like he's backed into a corner. And people are also bringing in his kids and saying like, how as a father could you even do this to your kid? Oh, that's a whole nother section. Let's revisit that in a sec because I have a couple clips that we need to watch because oh my God, I was screaming at the computer last night when I found them. When I first saw this, it, the video had come out like that day and I finished watching it was just like, what did I just watch? Like, what the fuck was that? And then I scroll down and see most of the comments are agreeing, not only agreeing with everything he's saying, but kind of like then adding their own little transphobic comments on top of it. Then I look back a few days later and I see a new uh, breed of comment that has surfaced. And it's that apparently this video was so egregious that it pulled D'Angelo Wallace out of hiding. <laughs> he's been taking a hiatus oh for the last God. nine months and he came out just to make a video on this. <laughs> and it's great. He rips it apart uh, from beginning to end to production to like everything about it. He just, it's amazing. And now, uh, just last thing about the comments, if you look at the comment section now, which I actually, d I did enjoy this because I feel so bad because if Chris is reading all this, which I have to imagine he's reading some of it. For sure. To see this many people weighing in on something that's so, that has nothing to do with them, I can't imagine. So in what I assume is a gesture of support for Chris, if you look at the comments now, it's like people have been spamming it with um, just random facts to like kind of bury the bad comments. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that's kind of Because slang. like I told you, when I first looked, I was like, oh my God, all these people agree. Now, if you look, kind of hard to find any comment that's relevant that. to the video. Okay. There's still bad ones, but I thought that that was kind of cute. Uh, another response to the uh, Sunny video was from Mr. Beast, who apparently has been forced to stay friends with him and forced to keep him on board. He says, yeah, this is getting absurd. Chris isn't my nightmare. He's my fucking friend and things are fine. All this transphobia is starting to piss me off. <laughs> you know, that's such a straight white, <laughs> straight white. I know, it's like <laughs> such a dude response. At least he is responding yeah, because yeah, yeah, especially yeah. as you said, he has been pretty like neutral and not really spoken out yeah, about things. Yeah, of course. I do like that he hasn't just like left Chris hanging because it doesn't seem like Chris has, I mean, uh, since the Sunny video, a lot of people have spoken out because I think had Sunny not made the video, people might be supporting Chris but since this video came out, people are supporting Chris and then ripping Sunny apart because they're like, what are you thinking? Here are just a few of the creators that have made response videos. And these aren't like small creator. It's not like videos that get 2000 views. Like these are all pretty big. All the titles are like Sunny V2's horrible response. Like it's all pretty bad. So after I see the video and the response videos start rolling out, um, first, YouTube shorts. What do you get recommended? content wise. I don't even know where they're located. It'll like randomly come up in like the middle of the page. Oh, sometimes I see, uh, yeah, I honestly, my eyes just filter that out immediately. I don't even look at them. You just don't mm -hmm. watch any of them. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And like, I, I will say I do click on some, I don't know. It, it doesn't seem to be as reflective of like my preferences as my like normal YouTube right, algorithm. Right, right. I feel like I am constantly just getting served the most horrible people ever. Oh, really? I feel like I'm being just rage baited constantly. <gasps> oh shit. <laughs> and it works every time. Time. Um, in this case, these are two people, they have a channel called, I don't know if there's more, I don't know if there's work there, but it's called Pop Culture Crisis. And I clicked on it because it said, Mr. Beast forced to support Chris Tyson transition. And I saw that right after the Sunny video and was like, fuck all Can these people. Can I just people. say really what, quick, like, Ethan mentioned on H3 or somebody told Ethan, I don't know which one it was. People are doing this now. I don't know if this is the case in this scenario, but they're fake podcasts. They're fake podcasting. So they'll have a setup of mics. They'll be filming and uploading a short as if it's a clip version of a podcast. But when you go to look, it's no podcast at all. It's just them trying to be viral. It's funny because I thought about that. This I think is an actual podcast oh. because they did do a longer video, which gotcha. the title for that one is Mr. Beast, Chris Tyson, Tyson gender reveal puts company in a tough spot. Ugh. I don't know these two people. I don't know what their normal stance on things are, but I clicked this and was like, oh my God, what is going on? I want to talk about what this does to a business yeah. when you're somebody like Mr. Beast who's built a 144 million subscriber business worth hundreds of millions of dollars. He is now what in effect held have? hostage. What options do you have in terms of how to respond to this situation other than just 100% blanket support for anything that, that goes forward. That so is your Mr. only Beast option. Replied and said, got you, uh, and then sent a bunch of heart emojis and said, I did one more heart than Carl because I'm a better friend. Um, Carl yeah. responded the same thing. 
and I'm just seeing all supportive comments and anything else is being hidden. And I'm this just could thinking, happen like, at any non-political business. Like, right. If that happened here, like, they'd be like... <laughs> and this is off. also like, after Mr. Beast and Chris Tyson themselves have gotten in trouble yeah. for being insensitive about gender yeah. identity stuff. Have they? I didn't know that. <gasps> I remember what they're talking about. I have them this, if, on another page. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Mr. Beast controversy. Like I remember Mr. Beast either in a video or a tweet, I wanna say. Oh fuck, I wish I remembered more. But basically he did that whole thing of like, I identify as a helicopter type of comment. He did something no, like that. Oh, that wasn't even one of the ones I was seeing. No, well, Chris had a bunch that came up from the past and it's like, it ranges. It's not just, there are a couple transphobic comments, but it's also racist comments, homophobic comments. And he's come out and like very much apologized for a lot of it. He like mentions that he was struggling at discovering his own gender identity. Not that it makes it okay to be making those comments, but his explanations definitely make a lot of sense. And he said it was like a lot of internalized things. He grew up in North Carolina and it was just like a very different world that he was raised in and what he was taught. He said he even like wants to go on a podcast one day and talk all about it, which he addressed all this back in 2020. I thought it was so weird the way she mentioned it though, because it was almost as if she was implying like he couldn't be transgender and like that Mr. Beast couldn't support him because they've made comments in the past. They couldn't have possibly grown and changed their minds. And also Chris couldn't have possibly had a bunch of internalized transphobia and stuff and been struck like. Yeah, and, and you see it all the time in the, you know, in the LGBTQ community. Like and if you know anybody who's gay or something, they probably had, if they grew up in a family that wasn't very accepting or they thought they wouldn't be accepting or whatever, they probably had a good few years of being homophobic or transphobic or yeah. just, just trying to push down on who they were by pushing that onto exactly. others. I don't think they're okay, nor do I condone them ever. I understand why that happens to a lot of people that have yet to come out. I just thought it was interesting the way that she framed that. And then also right before when the guy goes, this could happen at any non-political business. They refer to it as if it's some like terrible, terrible thing. And I'm like, honestly, like the only thing that's affecting you is that he looks different. Nothing else affects you. That clip was pretty random, but that I just, it brought into the conversation to like, wow, other people refer to him as if he's just like a commodity that Mr. Beast has. Because also a lot of people aren't even suggesting that Mr. Beast fire him because that would be bad for Mr. Beast, obviously. They think that Chris should resign because he's being selfish by doing this because of how it's affecting everyone else. And I'm just like, but it's not. Back in 2020, I think, Chris actually came out as being bisexual years ago. And he's made comments that uh, he has questioned his gender identity from a very young age and that some people in his life did know that, but he was obviously very private about it. This wasn't like a random, like he woke up one day and was like, time to paint my nails and change my gender. It like, never is, but people always have that rhetoric of like, oh yeah, this is uh, the trend as if it's easy or trendy or fun. It's almost always an uphill battle for people. Why do people think you would wake up one day and decide that? Or also uh, what you um, saw earlier, I think it was in the description for the Sunny video that the Carl effect is mentioned. I didn't know what that was, but apparently one of the other Mr. Beast cast members, Carl, he came out as being asexual, but he has like more feminine qualities and like he paints his nails. The Carl effect is that he's like feminizing the Mr. Beast group and that he, like made Chris trans. That is an actual narrative that I've heard. I'm not surprised. So speaking of making people trans, apparently Chris is making his son trans, but oh, why I mentioned the bisexual thing is Chris's wife knew he was bisexual when they were married and had a kid. Like that wasn't new news. He didn't suddenly go, I'm transgender. And then his wife was like, ew, we're getting a divorce and then leaves him. I mean, I don't know what went down. I can assume it wasn't that. There's also this narrative is, he ruined his marriage, he ruined his family, he's abandoned his child, he has left his kid without a father figure. All of this stuff, none of it is true. I get very frustrated. I, I mean, 
My brother was raised by two straight parents and he's gay. And I know plenty of gay parents who have raised straight children. And I knew it right when all of this was starting, when I knew he had a kid, I was like, oh, people are gonna think that he's trying to make him trans. Like that's 100% what people are gonna think. Not to mention, there's been a conspiracy theories around the LGBTQ community for years. Ever since like, I wanna say 70s, 80s, I'm not gonna get too specific, but there were like, court cases where it started, I think it was even like a daycare that one of the kids like claimed they were touched inappropriately or something. And one of the daycare uh, employees was gay. And it turned into this whole thing where the gay person got fired because they must have been molesting the child. And like it more and more became associated that the LGBTQ community has this like pedophilia fetish and also a whole foray into like satanic worship and stuff. But it's all bullshit. Like it got pulled out of nowhere. It's propaganda that has made it into court systems and stuff, which is bullshit. But so that's the immediate thing on the right is the argument is that like trans people, they're grooming your kids. That's why they hate drag queens. When you have a kid, you understand that their imagination is running wild 24 seven. They are exploring and doing things with the most innocent and pure mind that you can imagine. It's the, it's the most innocent view a single soul can have on life. That's what children have. My brother used to go up and get my mom's uh, heels and just wear them. Not to mention, he doesn't wear heels now. No. It's not like he was practicing for his adulthood. That's so true. Like that isn't a thing. All kids wear heels. Like that's a like that's a cute. Yeah, kid my thing. son will grab my shoes. Like they all want to play dress up. They all, you know, funny enough. Like Philip DeFranco's son, I know, always wants to have princess dresses and have heels on, and that's just what he gravitates. That's been towards. a huge thing in recent yeah. years. And how like that's been a problem. How like the boy aisle is blue, the girl aisle is pink, and that there's no straying from either. And knowing that that he's trans, I already knew that like anything like that, people would grasp onto. And judging by this picture that you shared here, which is his son wearing like, uh, I guess these are like princess dress up shoes or something. And he put as the caption, Tucker chose to slay this morning, which is funny. And literally people, I imagine lost their fucking minds. Yeah, you guys would think, uh, first of all, and he's not all, and not that it would matter even if he was in a dress, but he's literally in like pajamas and then just happens to have the heels on. There's nothing nefarious going on in this picture. It's literally just so innocent. I see one video where I was just trying to find uh, this, like find screenshots of tweets and stuff. I don't know who this first person is. They just had the links, but I heard this. I was like, oh my God. This is his son or I'm sure soon to be daughter, you know? And it's crazy because people are like, I don't understand <sighs> where he even said that himself. This is just more dog whistling and somehow trans that somehow trans and GNC folks aren't safe around kids. People are saying, I don't understand what's the issue with him reaching hundreds of millions of kids. Like, what is he going to do? You know, sway them to be trans? Well, the answer is yes. He's doing that with his own son. Of course, he's going to do it to the hundreds of millions of kids who he's showing that it's okay to transition, that it's not a mental illness to be trans. Upon finding those, then I got recommended and I forgot that um, I had heard good old Matt Walsh had made a video talking about this whole scenario. And the only reason I even know who Matt Walsh is, is didn't he have a uh, beef with Ethan? Uh, I believe at some point, but also he, I just know him for being incredibly transphobic and annoying. Oh, I think I'm getting him confused with Steven Crowder actually. Oh, But um, yeah. same, same thing. The comments he makes, I assumed would be bad, but oh my God. It's very similar to the last one, but it's just like, they say it with so much confidence. And the YouTuber uh, known as Mr. Beast, real name Jimmy Donaldson, has 145 million subscribers on the platform. That's just his, just, that's just for his primary his channel. Donaldson also has uh, several offshoot channels, each boasting millions of additional subscribers. On his main ch channel, Donaldson has three times as many subscribers as Taylor Swift, twice as many as Justin Bieber. In fact, he has more subscribers than every pop star, more than every internet personality, more than every media or entertainment company, aside from uh, Sony's India division. He is massively successful, wildly famous, and yet I hadn't heard of him until a few months ago. I spend much of my day online for my job, unfortunately. I also have a YouTube channel of my own, which feels suddenly quite obscure by comparison, but I've only just recently become vaguely familiar with Mr. Beast. And even now, I wouldn't recognize the guy if he passed me Bro, on the Bro, get to the point. Very troubling that someone can become this prominent among younger generations and have this much influence over them and yet be so 
obscure to the rest of us. If you're a parent and you made the mistake of giving your child open access to the internet, you're placing an enormous amount of faith in these influencers who are influencing your kids. It is a faith that is almost always, or really always, misplaced. Because even the most family-friendly content, the most seemingly innocuous, as most of Mr. Beast's content appears to be, can subtly, or not so subtly, introduce concepts that will take your child down a very dark path. In the case of Mr. Beast, That path has been opened by his sidekick and co-star on his videos named Chris Tyson. Tyson's a uh, frequent collaborator with Mr. Beast and an internet celebrity in his own right with nearly 14 million subscribers across TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. This, um, he gives his commentary on the heels photo and just what Chris is doing in general, which is apparently ruining his life and everyone else's just so he could live out his fantasies. What a freak. Matt Walsh, not Chris. (laughs) So... If you're keeping score at home, Chris Tyson has destroyed his marriage, abandoned his child to a broken home, created huge problems for his friend and business partner, potentially costing him millions of subscribers and therefore millions of dollars. And he has done all of this just so that he can live out his fantasies in public. He had a beautiful wife, a child, a family, an incredible job that most people would kill for, which had made him wealthy and famous. And and he pulled the pin and and chucked a a hand grenade into the middle of that happy and serene picture. And for what? What? He is so... Oh, he's so pretentious, it drives me insane. Right, like it's just so, he he says it all, not even just in a hateful way. A matter way, of fact but In way. like condescending matter of fact that it's like being trans is wrong and he's doing something that's fucked up for his own fantasies? In what world can your brain yeah, there's, reach there's that science, conclusion? There's science, there's so much that backs this whole experience. And my question to him would be like, what would you do if Chris did do what you said and just maintain that family picture, everything is fine. I, I'm fine with this identity and I have no issue with it, whatever. And then he kills himself. What do you have to say about that? But that's the whole point, is that he literally already has said, HRT saved my life. And Sunny V2 is literally being like, he shouldn't have done this. This was a selfish, ignorant decision. And I'm like, you guys realize if he didn't make the decision, he would have killed yeah, himself. Yeah, but I have so to you assume innately- that these people do not care. Like, I have to assume that they actually yeah, ex- would rather him be dead 100%. than be authentically himself because it bothers them that much. I don't want to give them the credit that they're able to connect this many um, different concepts and put them together. But it's like, if he said that he would have died without it, you know that means he would have killed himself. So you're saying that you don't want him to do it, then you're saying you're fine with him killing himself. That was a fine alternative I, for you. I actually do think they are, and I think it's sick. Yeah, I, we have to uh, end things there, but um, like, I'm sure we could rant for another hour, and I'm sorry that that was kind of rushed, but it was so many things, and then I just keep seeing so many other things, and it just, like, it was really disheartening because I know how, like, it's not like I don't know people are transphobic, I said this earlier, but it was it's just the way people are feel so entitled to be acting like Chris should quit a job that, again, he's not just an employee. Even if he was, that would be completely relevant. But it's one of Mr. Beast's longtime, like childhood best friends. And they are literally acting like he is just like bored one day and he wants to fuck up Jimmy's life. So he's going to become trans. disgusting. And I've said it once, I'll say it again. Not everybody needs a sure mic. You know what I mean? Like not everybody deserves to have a microphone and talk into it. I think what's even sadder is then you see how many people uh, agree, like echo it in the comments and stuff. And like literally say like, well, he's doing something wrong. Yeah, well, yeah, people genuinely do believe that. And it's sad to see. You would think that, or you would hope that a take like this would just get reamed and be completely shamed and it's not a lot of people agree with it anyway so we we don't like sunny v2 no he's not a friend of the show and we support chris yes <laughs> uh, absolutely i would hope that you would already know that but um anyway that's where we'll end it today i've got lots of things to do to prep for my little boy uh my little boy surgery so i gotta go but thank you guys so much for watching if you made it to the end just bless your heart thank you and um as always we will not see you on sunday we will now see you on monday and then after that we'll figure out when we're gonna we'll keep yeah. you posted on the two yeah. week where it's in it's in limbo yeah okay all right guys see you next week bye bye